can, can you see how many people are logged in already? Good afternoon, GCU residential community. We are gonna begin in a minute. We're just allowing everyone to log in um, as we see guests are now logging in. So welcome, give us a moment and we are gonna begin as we're allowing folks to, to log in so we can start the session. So again, welcome and give us just a minute. All right, so again, welcome. Thank you for joining us today for this, this town hall session, this virtual town hall session. My name is Amani Jennings. I'm the Dean of Students and it is my pleasure to have this time with you today. We wanted to have this, at least one more virtual town hall session, just to answer any last minute questions any of you may have before next week when we begin our check-in process. Um, I know that there have been a lot of town hall meetings, a lot of virtual meetings and sessions, but again, we just wanted to make sure that prior to your coming on campus during your scheduled time next week, that um, you're confident and comfortable and all of your questions have been answered and you're aware of what's going on. And so I have with us on our call today, John Mertz, who is our Director of Student Accounts, Ms. Cynthia McCarthy, who is our Director of Financial Aid, Mr. Seth Richards, who was our Director of Residence Life, and Ms. Elizabeth Estelle, who was our Coordinator for Residence Life Operations. And so any questions that you may have about financial aid, payment plans, payment overall, room and board, the check-in process, the residential experience, um, hopefully you'll, you'll, you'll have the opportunity to ask those questions today and, and make sure that you have the answers to those questions. As you may have heard last week when the President Marbach sent out his message. We are looking to begin um, the fall semester right now virtually. Um, shortly after President Marbach sent that message out, Governor Murphy um, sent a message out clearing colleges and K through 12 to open um, in-person, in-class, on-campus instruction for the beginning of the semester. And I'm sure many of you all are probably experiencing in your own towns, if you have younger kids, going to in K through 12, um, there's been a lot of movement in K through 12 now trying to figure out what they're gonna do to begin the semester based on the governor's um, message that no one was really expecting to be honest with you. Um, and so we're doing the same now. So as of right now, our plans have not changed. We're looking for primarily a, a, a virtual experience come the beginning of the fall um, with an exception of some, some classes such as nursing and some other classes that have been cleared for on-class, on-campus, in-class experience. But there will be another, yes, another town hall meeting on Monday at two o'clock that your students um, should have received links for um, where the, um, our president, President Marbach, will give some additional um, details and you'll know if there are any changes um, or what, what we may be doing differently. But as of right now, again, we are, we are looking to begin the semester um, with a, a, a virtual experience. But any questions that you have, feel free to add them to the chat. Um, we will be monitoring those questions as we go along and we will make every effort to answer every question that is asked. So having said that, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Mr. John Mertz, who again is our Director of Student Accounts and Ms. Cynthia McCarthy, who is our Director of Financial Aid, just to give you some brief updates, information on uh, what you should expect, what you should be doing, what should be done prior to the check-in process. And like I said, at any time, throw those questions in the chat and we'll get to them. John, Cynthia. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> uh, looking forward to having everybody here and trying to uh, return to some uh, semblance of normalcy and, and having students on campus and in person. Uh, my role here at the university is to make sure everybody gets billed properly and you have the information you need and follow up to make sure that students make their payment. Uh, it's a, 
their business and we need to make sure that uh, we have our money coming in and, and know when, when and where it's coming from. Everybody's situation is different. Um, some, some students get enough scholarships and grants and loans that covers everything. Some students get caught up in, in the financial aid application process, which it can experience some delays or some complications. Uh, but we also offer payment plans where students can sign up and agree to, to pay over a several month period. Right now, I think the maximum number of payments that we could spread this fall semester out is, is a four month period uh, through our authorized uh, payment plan uh, administrator, Nelnet. Uh, you can find information that on, on our webpage. Um, but we, before students are going to be allowed to, to actually move in, we need to know how you're going to, how the bill is going to be paid, the tuition, the fees, the, the housing, the room and board charge, uh, and anything else that might be there. I've been trying to send out email information to, to you uh, over the past month or so, and um, we um, uh, have been uh, I'm sending, still sending more, more follow-up information. I know uh, Dean Jennings wants us to answer all questions possible, but uh, a lot of the situ situations can be confidential and we don't want to have conversations about your personal situation in front of others. So um, if you do have questions uh, that are specific to you, please by all means ask as many general questions as you have. But if you have a, a question specific to you, please send uh, an email to student accounts, it's all one word, student accounts at georgian.edu, and we'll get back to you very shortly. We, we are monitoring that uh, all day long into the evenings. We've been responding on weekends periodically. So, um, and, and similarly, I'm sure uh, Cynthia will tell you about the, the financial aid uh, email connection as well. Um, speaking of email, it's very important, particularly at this time of the year that you check your Georgian e email information on a daily basis. Uh, it is our primary way of communicating with students and we rely on you. Check that. Uh, there are ways to forward your Georgian e e uh, email to your Hotmail or your Gmail or whatever other email account you may have. So take advantage of that so it's easier to keep track of. Um, and because this is such a complex process, college, paying for it, financial aid, if you're not sure, please ask questions. We're here to help. And even if we're helping from home, someone is available to help you. So look forward to interacting with all of you and having a smooth process and welcome to campus. Cynthia? So welcome everyone. Uh, we're looking forward to students coming back onto campus. The financial aid office has been very busy since probably bef before the, it, in the spring semester, getting award letters out and getting students to comply with documents that we need in order to process their aid since, since March. Um, I would say that probably 80% of all students have their financial aid packages complete and you should have seen them go over on your bill as anticipated aid. For those of you who we've been contacting for missing documents, whether they be documents for verification that we're required to do, or if you want your loans, if you haven't completed the loan counseling or done the, mass, the uh, entrance counseling, we need you to do that. Um, if you don't want to get loan, if you don't want the loans, you need to contact our office so we can remove the document that's holding up your aid. Our financial aid website offers much of what John was talking about, specific links to different options for borrowing additional funds. Um, it could be parent, the parent borrowing or the student borrowing um, private alternative loans. Um, I'm here for questions. Much of what John said, I'll reiterate, check your emails daily. It's very important. We try to contact you. Um, we're not allowed Technically, well, through FERPA, we can't email your parents. So if it's something they need to see, please be sure to share it with them. Yeah, a lot of it is confusing financial aid. They use the word try to demysti demystify financial aid. Uh, the first time you're, you're going through it, it's a very confusing process um, for students and parents. So please understand we're here to help you. Each one of you are assigned your own personal counselor. So you can email the general financial aid at georgian.edu and we will get in touch with you. Our phone number is 
987-2258. Um, we're busy answering all your emails and calls. Uh, we ask that you might be a little patient with us because we get over probably 150 emails a day at least, and um, we try to return them all before the end of the day. Sometimes it might go into the next day. Again, we look forward to everybody coming back. We have two, thank you, John and, and Cynthia. We have two questions so far that have come up um, in the Q&A. Um, one, I'll just read it as it is written. I sent an email to Res Life about my student loan last week that is set to be dispersed on my move-in date. Do I need proof of that before I move in? I never got an answer or will I be allowed to because my loan will not, or will I not be allowed to because my loan will not be cleared until that day? So I just checked when I saw your message come in and we actually didn't receive that email. So I apologize and nobody got back to you, but we didn't get it. Um, so we get all of our updates on who is approved through their billing to move in from John over here. So as long as um, the student accounts office and the financial aid office have the updates on your loans or your scholarships or whatever, as long as they know what your plan is for paying, I get the all clear from them. So once mm -hmm. I get the all clear from them, then students are able to move in. Go ahead, John. Did you want to say something, John? Oh, there. Yeah, I was muted. I'm sorry. I was looking at okay. reading her question online. I'm sorry. I was and I was looking her up in our system. Kayla, I I, <clears throat> I ask you to um send an email to student accounts so we can research it and make sure we confirm and coordinate with, with Residence Life. I will be sending updated lists to Residence Life on a daily basis <clears throat> of who all is clear to move in. And I'm going to try to send reminders to, to the students that aren't quite clear yet. Make sure you do whatever you need to do because we want this to be smooth for you. We don't want this to be a problem. Can I add something to that? What? I like to add. Um, mm -hmm. We generally don't disperse your financial aid to student accounts until after drop ad because we have to make sure certain uh, requirements are met, like you're actually here, or you're old for the number of credits you said you were going to be. But um, if for students who get additional loans, such as a Parent PLUS loan or an alternative loan, we certify those loans and we put it on your financial aid file, so to speak. And it, it should go over as anticipated aid. So like John said, if it needs to be, if that, even though that loan doesn't disperse, we know it's coming. And, and that's where financial aid's a little different than student accounts, only in that we don't disperse your aid, actual aid over until after drop that. So um, don't panic. We don't, if, you, if we certify a loan and it's on your aid, it will, it will, as long as you leave it, eventually go over to student accounts on the designated date. Our next question, how would we know our financial aid is squared away? Well, if you go on your self-service account, you'll see your aid and it would show anything missing documents. Um, if you're not sure, that means you're getting notifications from us. Like I last night about nine o'clock, I sent more emails out to some certain students who were missing certain documents. So we send you emails when you're missing information. If you're not getting an email, that means you're not missing it. Um, if you're unsure, you want to double check, give our office a call. I will also add to that, <clears throat> that we are, <clears throat> excuse me, updating on a daily basis as the financial aid office clears accounts, aid applications and, and says, okay, everything is good with your financial aid package. They're sending that information to my office and we're, we're right. displaying it now as anticipated aid. Mm -hmm. So we, like you said, we can't apply it directly to your account yet, but we can, we can do the math assuming that that, will, that it will happen and that's how we do it. So if you look at your statement uh, in the finance tab on self-service, you see anticipated aid and that's what you think you're supposed to get from financial aid office then it's then then it's complete if you see nothing then you need to reach out to financial aid and, and have a direct uh, contact with them next question when my aid says anticipated aid what is required of me 
When my aide says anticipated aid, what is required of me? I'll answer that. Um, that means that the financial aid office has reviewed and cleared and has told student accounts office that the aid is good. Uh, as long as you are registered, and most of you are all full time, uh, registered full time when, when the disbursement date comes after drop and add period, that means your aid is good and that, that much is, is, is available to you and that's what we expect to, to disperse to your account. Sometimes it covers all of your balance, but not, not, not all the time. So if, you, if it does leave you with another balance, it's your responsibility to pay the difference. I'd like to reiterate one thing before we move on. Um, if you have received notification from the state HESA, it's the Higher Education Student Assistance Authority, um, asking you for documents that they may be saying your files and verification with them, we're urging you to please respond immediately. There's a deadline for, their, for them to accept documents. It's November 1st. And we don't want you to miss the deadline if, you were be, if you're going to be eligible for a New Jersey uh, TAG award, tuition aid grant award. If you haven't heard from them, then your, if you haven't heard from them, and then your, your file with the state is in good standing. And you can always go into the njfams.hesa.org website and you can look at your, your individual account. Next question. There is a question that uh, someone's asking about checking and getting keys. I'm going to wait for that one until um, Res Life Talks. So I'm going to hold off on that question. The next question is, I'm on a payment plan. Do I have to show documentation in order to move in? And I think, Cynthia, you may have uh, already responded to this, but any, uh, mm -hmm. I'm on a payment plan. Do I have to show documentation in order to move in? That, that's, that's the question for me. Um, yeah. Again, I, I looked on the on the Q&A here on, on the, the Zoom call and it's anonymous, so I don't know who you are. I can't look it up. But either way, I wouldn't want to say in front of everybody, um, you know, whether or not you are, send an email to studentaccounts at georgian.edu. We'll get back to you quickly and let you know that we've seen that and we've logged it in and we know you've, you, you're on a payment plan. We, we have it pulled into our system so we can look it up real quick for you. Can you give that email address one more time? student accounts, that's all one word, student accounts at georgian.edu. Great, thank you. So now let's turn it over to um, Seth Richards, our Residence Life Director, and Ms. Elizabeth Estelle, our Coordinator for Res Life Operations, to just give us a walkthrough of what you should expect when you check in, and a little bit about what you should expect um, once, you, once you check in. Um, Seth, Elizabeth? All right. Thank you, Dean Jennings. And hello, everyone. Uh, glad to speak to you again virtually. Hopefully we'll be speaking together in person soon. Um, so as all of you know, move in is uh, only days away. We're starting on Monday. Um, we've spread our move out process, uh, excuse me, our move in process out over uh, seven days. So we're going to be moving folks in from Monday all the way through the weekend. Um, so all of you by now should have received an email from our office stating exactly when you're anticipated to come to campus. Um, once you do, you'll go through the campus safety gate at the front gate and they will direct you where to go. Um, typically, for those of you who are returning with us, it is going to look a little bit differently. We're having you actually go directly to the building where you will be checking in. Um, just to minimize contact and minimize um, traffic going to other places, um, we're having you all show up directly to the building where you will be moving in. So if you're a new student, you'll be going right over to Maria Hall, um, possibly Mercy Hall, um, and you'll meet our staff there who will be outside to direct you. We do ask uh, for those of you who are joined by friends and family members who will be helping you during this process, we ask that you arrive and stay uh, in your vehicle and we'll have somebody come out to you to check in with you um, and also check folks' temperatures. Um, please understand that we are taking every precaution that we possibly can. Um, the reason that our move-in process is so spaced out is so that we never have um, you know, too many people moving in at the same time. We're trying to keep our crowd down, keep our, con uh, our contact with others down as much as we can so that we can move everybody in safely. Um, so our staff will come and check the temperatures of everybody in the car um, and then we'll also give you all keys and what you need to check into your actual space. Uh, my, myself and my RA staff will be there um, in the buildings as well so as you all are moving in um, you'll be able to, to have folks there to support you. We won't physically be helping anyone move in um, 
sometimes I know in the past we've had folks, you know, using the move-in crews, some athletes who have come to help physically move things. Unfortunately, we just can't um, have folks touching each other's belongings um, at this point. So we will have carts and wipes to wipe down the carts um, for your use, uh, but we won't have anybody physically there to help move in. Um, we do ask that you limit your number of folks that are coming with you onto campus to two, in addition to yourself as the student. Um, and only one of those people at a time can actually physically accompany you in the building. Again, these are all based on the CDC guidance that we have from the state um, in terms of limiting the number of folks who are in one building and going in and out at one time. Um, even though our numbers will be limited of how many folks are moving in at once, we still only have the one front door where folks are going to have to be going in and out. So we are going to have to keep that number as small as possible. So we really appreciate you all cooperating with this. Um, you'll get a reminder, a small slip reminder of, of all of these rules on the day of so you don't have to remember everything I'm saying um, but if you don't remember anything else remember only one person is going inside with you and everybody that exits the vehicle you have to wear a face mask um, my staff my, myself um, everybody that's on campus we are all rocking the most high fashion face masks that we can find so we do ask that all of you um, uh, take a part in this precaution as well we will have um, extra face masks just in case if, if somebody does forget um, their mask, we do have some of those on site for folks. So that should not preclude you from moving in, but we do ask that you bring your own face coverings. Um, Elizabeth uh, has been the mastermind of getting everybody organized. So um, is there anything that I missed in terms of what that process will look like for folks this upcoming week? There's construction going on outside my window. So in case you hear construction noises, that's why, <laughs> why I'm muted most of the time. Um, the only thing I would add is that um, anyone who is not permitted to move in because um, they're missing health forms, they will be stopped at the gate. Um, campus safety will have a list of those people. It is literally the law that we cannot allow you to move in until all of those forms are turned in. And I know that um, health services is working diligently to get people um, updated and make sure that they are cleared to move in, but we still have a number of incoming students who are not cleared to move in because they don't have their health forms in. You will be turned away at the gate if you do not have your health forms turned in prior to and cleared prior to your move in date. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so if you all have questions about that, please reach out to those respective offices. Um, if you are missing items, you should know by now because I know that our teams have been reaching out proactively to folks. Um, but if you excuse me, do have any questions about that, please um, reach out proactively. Um, if you have any questions in regards specific things to the Res Life office, again, please reach out to us at reslife.georgian.edu. Um, that is our email account. We check that as often as we can. We have gotten a lot of emails, so please bear with us as we sift through those. We also are working with our students who have been arriving for their quarantine status internationally. We have our RA training this week. Um, so we are very busy working with our facilities team to get everything ready for y'all to move in. So please bear with us. But if you don't get a hold of us, please reach back out. We do want to answer all of your questions before next week. All right. And so we're going to get to some of these questions. But I, but I also want to reiterate, um, face masks are required when on campus. The only area where face masks are not required is when you are in your room. But once you step out of your that door of your room, in the hallway, in the restroom, and anywhere else on campus, face masks are required. Um, also, just to make sure, and I see that there's a question about the health forms, make sure that you have submitted those health forms because like Elizabeth said, if there is not, um, if those health forms have not been submitted, you will be, you will not be permitted to enter the campus. Campus safety will, will turn you around at the gate. Um, so keep that in mind as well. So with that said, let's get to some of these questions. First question we have, have the dorms been cleaned before we move in? Absolutely. Um, we, we had to move out over a series of weeks in the spring um, and all of the rooms were cleaned then um, and they have been kind of freshened up over the last few weeks. So yes, your rooms will have been cleaned thoroughly before your arrival. And cleaning will continue. So we have a very advanced cleaning schedule. Um, there are folks who are going to be going through the buildings throughout the day. Um, so we, everything is, is going to be very clean. And also keep in mind that there, the resident halls have not, the residence halls have not been occupied over the summer. So there has not been anyone else in those rooms since they've been cleaned 
And again, as Elizabeth stated, they have been cleaned again since our students moved out. Um, next question. If we submitted our normal health forms for freshman year and have received no emails, are we okay? Yeah, returners don't have to, to fill out anything new. That's only for new incoming students, transfers, or anyone who is a returning student who was previously a commuter and is moving onto campus for the first time. Um, so only if you are a brand new resident at GCU do you have to worry about those health forms. All right, so the net answers the next question, which was similar. Um, if we, for health forms, would health forms already have, would health services already have them for returning students? And you just answered that. Next questions. Will, will face masks be required to be worn outside even if we're not around others? Um, and I'll, I'll take that. And I should also mention that we are going to have face masks that we will be distributing. They probably won't be in um, by check-in day, um, but we are going to be um, providing all, all of our students, commuters and residents, with face masks, uh, or at least with one nice GCU branded face mask. Um, so the question, will face masks be required to be worn outside even if we're not on campus and they, even if we're not around others? And the answer is yes. As soon as you come onto the campus and exit your vehicle, you need to have a face mask on when you're walking to class, in a building, or just walking around. Um, and that is as per the guidance that we're getting from the state of New Jersey. Face masks are, are a mandatory part of being on campus. Um, next question. So are we responsible for our own room's cleanliness and sanitation, or do we have the cleaning services come into our rooms? So the, your, the, go ahead, Elizabeth. I was gonna say you're responsible for your own individual rooms, um, but we do have the cleaning service for any of the bathrooms. Um, I don't know if you had anything you wanted to add. Um, and the bathrooms are the, the shared bathrooms. So um, if you're in St. Cats or Mercy and there's a bathroom in your room, you are also responsible for cleaning that space. Um, so the cleaning and sanitation services will cover anything that um, is outside of the individual rooms, but they will not be going into folks' individual spaces. Next question. How enforced will these mask policies be? I'm concerned about people don't who are not following it amongst the dorms. Um, I'll answer to that, I'll respond to that overall, and then Seth or Elizabeth, if you wanna speak specifically as far as resident halls, but just keep in mind that the, um, our, our, our student code of conduct has been updated. And so this is a part of the student code of conduct. And so a student who is choosing not to wear a mask, um, that will be addressed in a similar fashion as to any other violation. We understand that you know this is, a, this is different, and, and I can't tell you how many times I've started to walk into a store before realizing that I don't have my mask on. So I don't want you to think that there's gonna be this face mask police and the second someone doesn't have a mask on, you know you're suspended. That will not be the experience. We're gonna be as patient as possible, but this is a health safety concern and it is important for, for people to wear masks. And if it's clear that a student is just choosing not to wear a mask, um, then you know there will be sanctions and, and, and that will be um, an issue that we will address directly with that student. And Dean's absolutely right. So that we're going to strike a balance between making sure that we are enforcing this because at the end of the day, this is how we get to have a college experience, right? If we don't adhere to these things, then we don't get to reside in the residence halls. And that's just point blank period. So we do ask that for a public health measure that everybody um, work on, on keeping each other accountable. Uh, myself, my staff, everybody, I've talked to the RAs about modeling, you know, proper mask behavior. Um, we all have to hold each other accountable because we are only only as safe um, as the least responsible among us. And we're all in this together. So um, we do ask that students are, are accountable to one another and that they think about these things. Um, so as Dean mentioned, we don't want to have to, but we absolutely will enforce it the same way we would enforce any policy in the residence halls. Um, but we also will be reminding folks um, because we don't want to create a, a paranoid or policing atmosphere, but we do have to remember that this is the only way that we can, you know, ensure that we can finish out the rest of the semester together. Another face mask question. Can I use a bandana as a face mask? Also, I never got a move in list. Can I bring my small fridge? Uh, yes. So in, uh, when we say face mask, we're, we're talking about a face, a face covering. Um, so according to CDC guidelines, a cloth face covering will go, uh, will, will work as well. It just needs to make sure that it covers both your nose and your mouth. Um, and 
so yes, the short answer is yes. Um, and bringing the small fridge, yes, you may bring the small fridge. Um, there is a move-in list. If you go to our website, you can see that on the Residence Life page on the Georgian Court website. Um, that talks a little bit about more um, about approved items and things that you can bring. But the short answer is yes, you can bring uh, a small fridge. Next question. If kitchens are closed in the dorms and no microwaves permitted in dorm rooms, how do I warm up my food, wash dishware, et cetera? So, so this is a good question. And, and it's one of the things that we're sort of trying to work on and what we can balance based on um, the New Jersey's reopening plans. So we have to minimize as much as we can shared space um, in general, right? Our lounge spaces, our indoor gathering spaces, those sorts of things. Um, so the short answer is that that what you're used to um, in terms of what you've been doing in terms of food or, or, or those sorts of things within the residence hall just may have to look different. And, and what I mean by that is we may not have the same access to kitchen space that, that you're used to in terms of cooking for yourself. And we may just have to rely more on the, the meal plan and being served for, through Aramark. Again, these are the things that are subject to change and we are willing to adopt them if we can see that we are safely able to sort of go through our own stages of reopening. So if we were to start opening up spaces like kitchens and things like that, are people cleaning up after themselves? Are they adhering to the policy of one person at a time? Those sorts of questions. So I will say that from uh, just a departmental standpoint from residence life, we are going to start more stringent because we need to get folks on campus and we need to really make sure we're all bought in and, and going through the motions and, and, and taking care of one another. However, if we see that folks really take well to that and are, and are able to adhere to our guidelines with minimal redirection, then we may explore later on in the semester being able to um, open up more amenities for, for folks. So I, to answer your question specifically, um, there won't be a way to do that right away um, when folks first move back and we'll have to rely on, like I said, Aramark and, and our dining facilities um, in terms of, of eating. Um, but it's something that we're going to look into doing, hopefully if everybody is bought in and following the guidance that we have laid out. And, and one thing that I will add is that there, there will be limited kitchen um, space available because some lounges just can't be locked. Um, and so there, there, there may be some uh, limited space that, that, that is available um, in our lounges. Um, in addition, the, the governor um, did issue, um, after our message went out, the governor did issue um, an update on colleges and universities being able to open, which gives us a little bit more leeway. But as Seth mentioned, um, we're still working on, on how that's going to look on our campus. And it's important for us to make sure that you know, the plans that we set forth are, are safe um, within the resident halls. So don't be surprised if at some point um, sooner than later, you see some of that space open up, if even on a limited basis, um, you know, as the, as the semester begins. Next question. Um, am I responsible for cleaning my room, bathroom in Mercy Hall dorms? When doing laundry in Mercy Hall, is it first come first serve? or will there be a schedule when to do laundry? Um, so the, the first question was answered already in terms of actually going into the student room. So um, the short answer is yes, you will be responsible for cleaning your own room and bathroom in Mercy Hall. Um, we'll only be sh uh, cleaning the shared bathroom spaces um, and the shared common spaces within the residence halls. Um, in terms of doing laundry, um, again, we're going to have guidance as to how many folks can actually physically be in the laundry room at the same time. Um, there won't be assigned laundry times because it's just not feasible to have that for all students, but there will be guidance in terms of social distancing, wearing masks, and how many people are allowed to physically be in that space at the same time. Um, so all of that will be posted so that you're able to see it. Um, and we just ask that folks adhere to it. And again, the better that we're able to do this and the more you know, stringently we apply this to ourselves, the more liberty we'll end up being able to have. So that's a good question. Next question. And I think you already answered this one. When I move in, where do I come first? And that was when you, when you come in onto campus, you'll stop at the campus safety um, gate um, at the beginning. As soon as you come onto the campus, there's campus safety. They will direct you as to exactly where you'll be going. So all you need to do is arrive at campus, come to campus safety, which is right there at the front, front gate, and they will direct you as to where you're going. Um, next question. I have been trying to add my parents to have shared access online 
but it consistently says there are no relatives to invite. How can I resolve this and add my parents? I'm not sure I understand this question. Is that in regard perhaps to, if you could, um, whoever is question that is, if you could just type a new one and be a little bit more specific, I think they may be referring to the, the screening process potentially for who's, who's coming onto campus. I'm not sure if you could just add a little more context. It um, might also, <clears throat> excuse me, it might also be in relation to access to a student accounts because our, our system does allow students to authorize parents to look at their term bill and make payments for them. So if that's the good. case, please write directly to student accounts at georgian.edu an email. Uh, and we have step-by-step -step instructions we can send to you on, on exactly how, how to make sure you get that done. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think I got a feeling that's what that question was. But since Seth, since you did bring up the screening, um, and maybe Res Life, what we can do is send the screening link out again to all of these students, because there is a screening link that is gonna be required to coming on campus. Everyone in the vehicle will have to complete the screening tool. Um, if, if, if it's a person in the vehicle who is coming onto campus, even if they choose to just stay in the car, everyone in the car, everyone in the vehicle has to fill out that screening, um, that screening questionnaire. So just please keep that in mind um, that everyone who's coming onto campus needs to fill that out. Next question. Has security measures been increased since COVID, like keeping aware of those visiting? Uh, yes, the short answer is, well, I wouldn't necessarily say the security measures um, have been increased, but the uh, rules related to visitation have changed and will be addressed as such. Um, so, and, I, and I've seen, I've been looking ahead in the, the chat on some of the questions. Um, there are a number of questions about visitation, so I'll just go over the visitation policy now. So again, in an effort to, to minimize traffic um, for people who are not supposed to be within the residence halls, any non-G CU affiliated person is not available for visits um, in the residence halls point blank for this semester. Um, so if somebody's coming to pick you up, if it's a friend or family member and they are uh, entering campus for the purpose of either dropping off something to you or picking you up, they are allowed to enter, um, but they're not allowed to stay for a prolonged period of time. Um, and there won't be any overnight guests allowed this semester. Again, this is um, in, in accordance with the CDC guidelines. This is not just a GCU thing. This is best practice across the state. Um, as we try and minimize traffic. In regard to visitation within the residence halls for GCU students, um, if somebody is you know, on a different wing in your building, um, you are allowed to have visitors, you are allowed to have visitors in your space, um, but in the, the, the double rooms in Maria and St. Joe's, you can only have one person um, per, no, excuse me, one person at a time visiting um, in that space. So even if you have a roommate, there can only be a total of three people in that space. Again, this is based on social distancing practices and the fact that if we have too many people in the same space, it's just not tenable. Um, so I've seen a couple of questions about um, you know, spaces that, that are a larger space, for instance, in St. Cat's, um, where there is the, the sort of um, communal living space in addition to the bedroom spaces. Um, again, the visitation policy is really limited and it is only applies to other GCU students. So we can't have non-GCU affiliated folks in the residence halls. Um, we are gonna be more stringent about this than we have in previous years, because again, um, the things that go on behind closed doors do affect everybody more so than, than any at any other time. Um, so please, understand that um, adhering to these guidelines is what will allow us to, to remain in campus. So um, that's sort of the overview of the, the visitation policies that we have right now. Um, if we, we are, you know, moved up to phase three and we are starting to reopen and, and we are able to do these things, we can revisit it. Um, but we are starting off with pretty much the most stringent guest policy that we can right now. But you are allowed to visit um, your friends in their rooms in other spaces as long as you're adhering to those guidelines. Next question, how do we know what we need to pay after our scholarships? How do we need to know what we need to pay after our scholarships? Log into self-service and look at the finances tab. You can access your student account. I will clarify because I'm not crazy about the way our system is defaulted. It, 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 the initial display shows your cumul cumulative um, charges, payments, financial aid, any refunds as your first display, but you can select show me just one semester and then you choose the semester that you want to look at 
and it'll give you a, a, a display of your of your, your current balance as of that minute in time. Um, so it will show your tuition fees, uh, your housing charge, uh, and any payments you may have made, your housing deposit, uh, and any financial aid that is now anticipated, and it'll add up all the charges, subtract all of the credits that have come from payments or financial aid, and the difference is the balance that you still owe. Good thing to give you some information. Just this morning, we dispersed uh, the students' student loans for the first time for, for the fall semester. So uh, before this morning, your subsidized and unsubsidized Stafford loans were displaying as anticipated. Now they no longer show as anticipated. Now they show as an actual payment towards your student account. Next question. And Seth, you already answered this, but I think that I just want to uh, emphasize. The question is, how many students would be allowed in a room at one time? Seth, you answered that. Um, I'm concerned about parties and people not following guidelines. Just, just let me stress that how important it is um, for students, resident students particularly, to follow guidelines. Um, because if we should, in the worst case scenario, we have an, an outbreak in our resident hall, that would force us to close our resident halls and that would force us to send everyone home. And that is not something that we want to do and I'm sure that's not something that you all want to do. So it's important for us in such a small closed community that we follow the guidelines. We're, we're gonna do the best that we can to keep you all safe but part of that responsibility falls on your shoulders as well. Um, and I know this is not the ideal environment, you know, um, that you are thinking about when, when going away to college, um, but there's a lot of things that we're dealing with right now that, that we don't want to, and we just have to, to deal with it. Um, so just keep that in mind um, that it is really important for you all to do as best as you can to keep yourself safe, as we're gonna be doing whatever we can on our end to keep you all safe as well. Um, next question. I'm in, I'm in the singles room in St. Katz. Is there a stove or refrigerator? No, the, no rooms have any kind of stove or oven or anything in them. Nothing with any kind of heating um, or exposed heating element is allowed in the rest of the house, and that is, you know, fire marshal New Jersey rules. Um, refrigerators, the only rooms that come with refrigerators are the suites in St. Katz. They have a small residency there, every other room has to provide their own refrigerator. And Elizabeth, your um, audio cut out a little bit there, um, but there there are stoves in the, the suites in St. Cat's where the, the four people are. There's refrigerators in the suites, there are not stoves. There are no stoves in there, nope. right, okay. Um, so there's no nothing out there, and then the um, within the actual individual rooms, um, there aren't any refrigerators. The only ones are in St. Cat's in the common area. Um, and that's it. Okay. Next question. I feel like, Seth, I feel like we've heard this question before. If my roommate and I have no roommates in St. Cat's resident halls fall and come spring, two random people are shoved in our dorm, will we be stuck with them the next year or can we keep our room and have two different roommates? As seniors, we are going to room with upcoming juniors next year but have to wait this year because sophomores aren't permitted in CATS. Okay, so for very specific questions like that, please reach out to us directly. I, I can't answer one way or another right now about roommates and, and, and those sorts of things. So if you have specific concerns about that, please reach out to us. Um, in terms of the just sort of generally folks who are wondering because we have more than ever students that are going to be dropping in and out per semester as opposed to per year. So there are some folks who are not with us right now that are looking to join in the spring um, and vice versa. So we are cognizant of that. Um, we are going to do our best, especially this semester, not to add more people into an occupied space if we can avoid it. Um, because again, we are trying to spread students out as much as possible. Um, so I can't answer anything specifically about, you know, reserving rooms or any of that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, you know, if you have specific questions about that, please reach out to us individually and we'll, we'll work on that. I would also just add, since this person happens to be asking about next year, who you're living with this year has zero bearing on who you're living with next year. Everyone starts fresh in the spring. Everyone has to go through the same exact lottery process. You build your own roommate group for next year. Who you're living with now has no impact 
Next question, how will the communal bathrooms work with so many students in the resident halls? So Elizabeth, do you want to talk about how we've sort of spread folks out and, and tried to mitigate that? Yeah, so the only buildings with communal bathrooms are St. Joseph Hall. And in those buildings, we have done our best to um, limit the number of people who are in those buildings. So most rooms are single rooms at this point, not all of them, but most are. Um, so that inherently limits the number of people who are using each bathroom. Um, and so even as some people are, we're moving people around, we are keeping in mind how many people are on each floor who would be utilizing the same bathrooms um, that would have an impact on that. So um, the max number of people right now that we have that would be using any one bathroom would be about 22 people that would be sharing roughly four stalls. Um, so the only other thing is that for, especially the first week of class, um, or nope, sorry, not the first week of class, next week as people are moving in, we do still have um, a number of students who will be in quarantine during that time, um, who will be utilizing those shared bathrooms. So we will be designating one stall just for that time period when those students are in, still in quarantining in their rooms, that they will only, should be the only ones using that stall and that way, once that quarantine week is over, that stall can be thoroughly cleaned um, even more so than it had been throughout the week. Um, and then it will open it up for everyone else on the floor to use after that. Okay, next question. So will there be kitchen because I'm on a pescatarian diet, I need to make my own food. I, I will say that if, if there are any specific dietary needs and if you have not already done so, you need to contact Residence Life directly first, um, because that may also need to be a conversation with Residence Life and Aramark, our, our food vendor. So if you have specific dietary needs, you need to contact Residence Life immediately. Um, Seth, Elizabeth, any other response to that question? Yes, yeah, so Aramark is, is more than willing and is able to, to handle all sorts of different needs in terms of specific dietary things. So um, for this one in particular, as Dean Jennings mentioned, there will be very limited access to, to kitchens, um, depending on where it is that, that you live. Um, but there, there, so there will be some small access, but the more important thing, as he mentioned, is that we are able to work with all sorts of different accommodations. So if you reach out to us, we can put you in contact um, with the folks over at Aramark and they have a really comprehensive manner of working with students with very specific needs. Okay, next question. So just to clarify, Res Life will be notified through financial aid about being cleared for move-in. Res Life, the question is, will Res Life be notified through financial aid about being cleared for moving? Student accounts is the one who provides it because we get payments from other places other than financial aid. So we, we, we take all of the financial aid that's cleared and any other payments or payment plans that have been made outside scholarships from private agencies or sponsorships from governmental agencies. And, and we, we coordinate all that and send that to the updated to to res life. So um, better to take care of it right now than wait until next week on move-in day because I may have told res life that morning <clears throat> that someone's not clear and then we have to go back and forth and have you in a holding pattern somewhere until until we get to, to communicate. But we'll be in close communications all week next week. <clears throat> next question. Thank you. Next question. How will the library work or use for printer, etc.? Um, just, I, I would say that the library at, at most will be available um, with limited access, uh, but that's something that, that there may be some changes too. So just, I, if you're able to, I would log in on the town hall meeting that we're having on Monday. Um, you should have already received the link for that, but at most the li library will be open um, at limited, with limited capacity and limited availability. Just keep an eye out um, for any possible changes. I'm also on a committee with um, the person who's responsible for the library hours. And I know that they are working on um, a system to be able to do a curbside pickup for um, books and items from the library. So that's not fully in place yet, but it is an option, something that you could look forward to. So even if the library doesn't necessarily have open hours, um, they will be available in some form for you to be able to utilize their resources. 
Next question, will we be getting an email before or on our move-in day about information on where to go? So you, sh you should already have that email. Um, and also, as we've gone over, um, when you arrive to the front gate in Campus Safety, they will direct you on where to go. And our staff will also be outside helping you as well. So um, if you have not received an email with your move-in time and information, um, please double check and then reach out to us. Um, and yes, the short answer is you will know where to go on move-in day and you should have an email from us. You will be going directly to your building, which you should already know. Um, you log into Simplicity Residence, which is the same place where you filled out your housing application. So you should all already have that link and information. When you log on there now, it tells you your building and room number, and that is where you will go. Thank you. Next question. Are the, are the Maria laundry machines working? Real quick, Seth, before um, you or Elizabeth answer that, I will say that our goal was during the summer to have um, a new vendor come in um, uh, to upgrade our laundry services. That vendor has been severely impacted by COVID as well with layoffs and other things, and they were unable to do the work over the summer. So hopefully we'll be able to upgrade our laundry services during the, during the fall semester. Um, but just know that that is something that we are working to do and our plan was to have it done over the summer, but the vendor was just unable to do that due to layoffs that they were dealing with. Um, so having said that, Seth or Elizabeth, any response to that question? Um, I mean, the short answer is yes, they, they, they are working right now. I would just, I would only add to that, that if you go to do laundry and something is not working, you have to tell us that it's not working and we need to know specifically which machine is not working and what the exact problem is so that we can put in a work order to get it fixed. Those machines are fixed by the actual laundry vendor, not by our facilities department. And so we have to be able to have time to reach out to them and to schedule a time for them to come onto campus to fix them. And so as we don't use these laundry machines, we have to rely on you all to tell us when those things are, are not working. Next question, will GCU students get tested for COVID weekly or if not feeling well? So the testing, as of right now, we are, we are not doing testing. We are working with the vendor right now who will provide testing for us. So I'm not gonna, I, I can't really speak on the frequency of that because that's, we're still working out the logistics of that. Um, but if a student is not feeling well, um, then, they, then a student can absolutely contact our health services office um, and health services, they want you to call, not come in. So you'll call, you'll go through a, um, a screening through with them over, over the phone. They may tell you to come in or may give you some other advice as to what to do. So health services is there and available should a student not be feeling well. And hopefully what we'll, we will have worked out the logistics with this other vendor um, to provide testing um, for those students who, who may want to get that done. It is not likely that testing will be mandatory. I don't think we're gonna be mandating testing, but we are trying to um, clarify and to solidify the resource so that if, student, if a student wants to get tested, they can do so. The state of New Jersey has also made available a list of um, off-campus sites in the area that right now offer free testing so that is an option. If a student wants to go to any of these offsite locations to get tested, they can, a student can do that. But again, we're just right now negotiating, having some testing available on campus um, for, for our students. So hopefully um, shortly we'll be able to announce what exactly that's gonna look like. Next, qu next question. Is there a schedule of mandatory and voluntary events for orientation that we must attend after we move in and through the week before classes start on August the 24th. I, um, I would say that for new student orientation, you will receive a link in new student orientation, which will be virtual. You will receive a link for that. Um, and that will be in the 19th of August. But because it's virtual, you'll be able to go in, start, stop, go back to it and finish, you know, at your, at your leisure. It'll be available for, I think for about 14 days, you'll have a 14 day window to do that. Um, but new student orientation will be virtual and you will receive that link shortly. Okay. 
Next question, will there be a student van service in the fall? Will there be a student van service in the fall? So that's the, the shuttling service um, and we're, we're in talks with how we can do that safely. Um, as of now, I have not gotten an update from our folks over at Campus Safety that has let me know whether or not it will actually be running in the fall. Um, Dean Jennings, I don't know if you have any more information on that. Yeah, I know that they're working on, on a plan for that. I, I do think it will be available with limited, limited service, um, but I think they're still trying to figure out how to, to make sure that they can do that and do it safely. But I do think that that's gonna be available on a limited basis um, for the fall semester. Um, next question, why aren't you temperature checking everyone who comes off and onto campus? Like if someone comes to campus after shopping, they should would immediately bring COVID in and you have, and all you have is a screening form. I'll respond to that and then Seth or Elizabeth, if you wanna to add to that, feel free. Um, we have multiple people um, coming on and off campus for any number of reasons. I mean, just think of the students within the resident halls at any given time um, can come on and off campus. And it's, we simply don't have the resources to have someone stop everybody that comes onto campus or comes into a resident hall um, for uh, temperature screening. And so while we are doing temperature screenings for check-in, um, that is a mandatory part of the check-in process, to do that for everyone that comes on and off or off the campus throughout in the entirety of the semester, um, we just don't have those resources. I will say that we were, we do have temperature stations on campus that will allow a student, faculty, or staff member, if they want to have their temperature taken, um, they can do so um, confidentially. Um, so those are gonna be in different areas on the campus. Um, and the screening tool, like I said, that is a daily tool that you have to fill out Day, um, every day prior to coming onto campus. Um, but as far as the, as far as taking temperatures, anytime someone comes onto campus, as of right now, we just don't have those resources. Um, Elizabeth or Seth, any other details? Yeah, I, I also would want to add that just in, in response to this very specific query, um, taking the temperature of somebody that just got back from the grocery store, that student would not actually exhibit a temperature at that time anyway. So the screening tool is actually more effective because it allows for us to gather more of a, um, a swath of data over a period of time, right? So it actually would say after um, that student has returned if they start to develop symptoms. So um, the, the, the temperature checks are just one tool that we can use. Um, folks self-monitoring and, and being responsible and socially distancing um, is the more effective tool and the temperature checks are just one part of that. And it's simply not feasible for us to, um, A, to even to even um, follow up with every student that, that enters and exits a residence hall throughout the time at any point, because we don't have any sort of curfew mechanism. Um, students could, could leave in, you know, in the middle of the night if they so choose. Um, so there's just no way to feasibly do that um, with every point of, of entry. Um, but we do have other tools that, that catch um, those sorts of things. And, and you know, we, we were relying on folks being responsible for themselves and reporting these things as well. So we have a number of tools at our disposal, but, but that's just simply not one that really makes sense to do or is feasible. Next question, will there be the same workers from the cafe working in the dining room like Mickey, Mimi, Marcos, because I like how they cook food. So for the returning students, you should know that we do have a new food vendor, Aramark. Um, so that will be a different experience for those of you who are returning to campus. And I do know that they um, did as best as they were able to, to retain the folks um, in the dining service. I don't know exactly who all may still be there um, and Elizabeth or Seth, I'm not sure if you've gone over there to see, but I do know that their goal was to kind of keep as many people as they as they could. No, specifically who was kept on. I know. So Airmark is taking over both dining and the management of our um, facility staff and all people who were currently part of the, the facilities and dining staffs were given the opportunity to apply to work for Airmark and remain here. Um, at least i pretty sure all of the facilities workers are are maintained um, at least all of the housekeepers um, within the residence halls and a lot of the maintenance staff they're all still with us as far as dining um, the management staff has all changed over and that's pretty much who we've been working with virtually um, to, to start getting the year started so we haven't had the opportunity to see the actual kitchen staff um, yet to see who is still around 
Next question. If we have a balance, can we pay half of it before moving in or do we need to have it, we, or do we need to have it paid in full? Can sign up the payment for the payment plan <clears throat> to spread, <clears throat> pardon me, spread the remaining balance out over several months if you're not able to make that payment in full or otherwise you would need to apply for additional loan money to help uh, have, have that uh, balance covered or even a combination of the two, you, a little bit of loan money, a little a payment plan and an installment uh, payment. Um, just, we just need to know how and when the money is going to be coming from. Next, next two questions, I'll just lump them together because I think they're the same. Um, question, so how the heck will, will, will people do laundry? Where will we wash them? Um, and I think, Seth, you had mentioned that the machines are currently working. There's nothing wrong with the laundry, the washers or the dryers. And if this person is alluding to the machines being upgraded um, during the semester, um, if we are able to do that, that will be done in a way that doesn't impact, you know, you know the students being able to do their laundry. Um, but like I said, we're still, we're still working on that. Um, but the machines are working, so there, there is no real change as of right now or nothing that will prevent a student from doing their laundry. Seth or Elizabeth, any other detail with that? No, we, we went over it before just to reiterate um, the, the, the only um, sort of guidance that will be put in that is just physically how many people are crammed in the laundry room at one time. Um, we'll be able to use the machines. All of that will go on. I mean, folks are going to be masked and distanced, just like the same kinds of precautions that we take when we go to the store or do other things. Um, they, will, they will be cleaned as well. We're going to have the cleaning services go through there and clean those spaces as well. Um, so there isn't much of a change of that. It's the same type of policy and responsible behavior we expect everywhere else. Next question, is the computer room in CATS going to be closed completely and the printer will not be available? That is correct. Um, as of right now, there will only be one lounge space open in each of the residence halls. Um, in St. Katz, it will be that first floor lounge. In Maria and St. Joe's, it will both be the lounge in the basement. They are the largest that would allow for any social distancing. Um, that students may be able to utilize, um, but because computer labs have to be monitored, which is one of the um, guidances that was set by the state this week. And so in order to have people there to monitor, we, we can't do that in the residence hall. So all of the lounges with computers in them in the halls will be closed off. Next question, when you say guests have to take a screening test, is it online? or just temperature once they arrive. The screening tool is online, um, and hopefully by the beginning of the semester, there will be an app that will be used for that. But the screening is online, and yes, anyone that's coming on campus, whether they are a guest or a student or a faculty member or employee, if you're coming onto campus, you will have to fill out that online screening questionnaire. Even residents have to fill it out before they leave their buildings. Everybody. Next question, if a resident student hasn't left campus, will they still need to do the screening questionnaire every day? They do because we, we don't keep records of who goes in and out of the buildings or on and off campus. Um, so we would have no way of knowing that you didn't leave your room. So yes, everyone has to Next question, are students still able to work on campus this fall? Short answer is yes, work study is still available. Um, opportunities may be a little bit limited because there are many offices that are just not open as much as they would normally be. But yes, there will still be work study available on campus. Next question, do we know when the honors scholarship list is going to financial aid? Because I have a balance that should be covered by my scholarship. So, well, I'd like you to contact the financial aid office. Uh, I believe most of them have been put on. Uh, just shoot an email, financialaid at georgian.edu, and we'll take a look at it. Thank you. Yeah. Next question, where would, where would you do laundry in St. Katz? 
facilities on each floor in both St. Cats and Mercy Hall. For returning students, we use the same ID card, correct? Or do we have to update them when we return to campus? We'll have it activated before you arrive. So that's the same ID card and it will be activated before they come to campus. Next question, where can we find information about our dining plan? The dining plan hasn't changed from last year. Um, so since Airmark took over in July after we had already had everyone sign up for their housing stuff, they didn't want to make any changes to that. So the, how, the meal plan itself is staying the same for this year. So it's still the same 19 meals a week um, plan. And then as they gather data this year on how often students are using the different facilities, or they'll do some focus groups um, to figure out what students are interested in. And then moving forward, they may decide to make some alterations to the plan offerings. But for this year, it will be the same as it was in the past. Next question, what is GCU's student loan period? Make sure I understand. Okay, so if you're applying for an, a loan, a private alternative loan or a Parent PLUS loan, you would use 824-2020 through May 14th, 2021. That would be our, that's our academic year and that would be the loan period. If you're looking for a loan, let's say just for one semester, you would go, for instance, if you just want it for the fall, it would be 824 through 12, 13. Um, and then for the spring, uh, I can't even remember the date when school starts, January 14th, I think our loan period starts there um, through May like 14th. So that's when you're looking at a loan period, it just depends on if do you want it for the whole year or for the semester. If you have any questions, uh, if that didn't help you, you can contact financial aid and speak to Michaela and she could guide you through that. Next question. How many students occupy Mercy Hall and why is Mercy Hall double occupancy versus single occupancy? Mercy Hall is the smallest building that we have in the first place. We're using the second floor of Mercy Hall uh, for traditional housing this year. So we're looking at a total of like 30 students that live in the entire building. Um, it is doubles instead of singles because they have private bathrooms. And so they are still limiting the amount of people that they will be exposed to even with having two people in a room. Plus the rooms are a little bit larger than the ones in Marie and St. Joe's. And so the students in those rooms have plenty of space to spread out. Next question. How do you find out where you are staying? I can't log in to my housing contract. The machines are beeping outside my window again, so it's loud. Um, so with your housing contract, so if you are having issues logging into Simplicity Residence, I would recommend first trying to use a different browser. We have discovered that some browsers are extra sensitive with our software um, and many students have had issues with that and, and needs to just use a different browser. Um, if that doesn't work, you'll need to contact IT um, to get um, your password changed because it will use the same GCU username and password on your email and, and our software. So if that password's not working, then you have to contact them for that. Um, otherwise, you can email us, and I do have access to be able to tell that to you, but we do recommend students get um, their passwords and everything straightened out with that because we do utilize that system for a lot of things throughout the year. So you do need to make sure that you have access to it. And John, it looks like our last question is for you. Sure. I'm currently waiting for on-campus job listings as I am part of the work-study program. Should I still work out a payment plan with student accounts despite not having a work position yet? I would say yes, you should work out a payment plan through Nelnet. Um, first of all, jobs are not real easy to come by. Your hours of availability are not a sure thing. Um, and you get paid periodically in, in, a, in a regular paycheck, which will be 
you know, a, a check made payable to you. Uh, and not, it's not a contract with the university. We're not allowed to keep your pay that you've earned from, from work study to, to pay down, down your tuition and fees. So you, you would need to sign up for a payment plan. John, thank you. So that looks like that is that concludes our, our questions. Um, I know it's going to be a busy week next week. Residence Life will be available if you have any other questions. Um, again, there's another town hall meeting for Monday that's just going to be from the president that's going to speak about the overall university experience. I would strongly recommend that you log into that um, town hall meeting as well as there, there may be some, some updates. There are things that are changing continuously and we're I know the, the virtual town hall meetings are, um, can be a little bit tiring, but it's, it's also the best and fastest way that we can communicate information to you all and you all are able to, as you can see, ask questions directly. Um, so please log into that town hall meeting, um, check your emails, and not only for that, but just keep an eye on your emails in general as, as you're gonna see updates, any updates are gonna come through there. So having said that, um, check in is next week. Summer's over, it's time to get back to work. Time to begin the semester. I don't know if you about you, but I'm extremely excited to see you all check in. Um, so enjoy your weekend. I'll see you all next week and go Lions. And thank you, John, Cynthia, Elizabeth. Yes, and thank Sam. you. This is very helpful. Thank you. Y'all stay Take safe. Care, everybody. I'm